2019, I opened this guitar, my new Godin Multiac, on camera, and I did a little unboxing. And it's become very popular, and I'm assuming it's because people are trying to decide whether or not they should get one. So I thought that now, three years later, I could do a quick run-through about all the things that I've learned and the positives and negatives of the guitar. Right up front, it's an amazing guitar. I am not going to pretend to be objective. This guitar has become indispensable to me. It has become my primary instrument, and... I, I kind of feel bad about my past self for all those years that I never had this guitar. It was cruel, and I should have bought it many, many years earlier, but the truth is I, I didn't know it existed. I tried for decades. I tried so many different things to try to electrify nylon string because I love playing nylon string. I play nylon at home, but when I'd go to an open mic or play in a band, I always had to play steel string. Because I, I couldn't, uh, I, I used piezos, those sounded like garbage, and, and microphones, feedback, and I failed. I just kept trying and failing, and I eventually sort of gave up. But then, the last time I tried, I discovered some inexpensive guitars that were okay. And then I discovered this guitar, and it is, if, if you need to play live with just a simple quarter inch jack. Some of these will have um, a MIDI output too, which looks really cool, and maybe that'll be my next guitar, but we'll see. This guitar has always worked anywhere I go. It's got a strong signal, it sounds great, it doesn't feed back. Buy it, if you can. It They, they are a little pricey. Now, I said that it sounds great, so, Let's do a little demonstration. I'm going to play uh, a part of the song uh, Lagrima from Torrega. And I'm going to do... So we're going to leave all of the EQ kind of flat. I think this one maybe doesn't do anything. And this is volume. And here is the first pickup position, the one all the way on the top. second position. A little thinner, a little more nylon-y. Third position. position, which is what I normally uh, leave it on. When I first got it, and went into the professional studio, uh, the engineer there, we recorded direct from the quarter inch, and we also uh, mic'd it with a couple of expensive mics. And it sounded good, and we, we mixed in a little of both, but since then, it, it really wasn't worth it. it. It did sound good, but it didn't sound so much better that it was worth all the extra hassle. And I've been recording everything in the studio directly through the output. Another thing I like about this is it comes with two strap buttons. You can just put on a regular guitar strap and you can play this standing up. I love playing standing up. I never have to worry about finding the right chair and footstool. It works the same way everywhere. Though I would recommend getting some locks 
Let me show you what I've got here. These little guys are typically found as Dunlop lock strap, L-O-K. You can get a set of two for about four dollars and you don't have to drill into your guitar or do any other type of installation. You just put the strap on, give it a twist, and they've never failed me. Cheap and effective, no complaints. If you have one of these guitars and you play with a strap, 100% recommend getting those Dunlop um, lock straps. I also love how the guitar plays, but that can be a bit of a personal preference. It has a full two inch wide neck that I like, but for certain techniques, um, I know Kentucky thumb picking does a lot of work with the thumb over the top, and I, that does not work for me. Maybe if you have bigger hands, it'll work for you. I would assume that for Kentucky thumb picking and other styles that use the technique of the thumb over the top of the neck, you're going to want something with a smaller neck. If I had two complaints about this, and they're minor, but one would be it's a little expensive. This particular model, the suggested retail price is over $1,900. I got it for less than that. That's They always make it kind of high, but you're not going to be able to find it for less than half that price. I don't want to suggest that it's not worth it. It is well worth it. It is worth every penny. It's worth more than that. But I, I stress out a little because if this gets lost or stolen or broken, I, I'm going to be in a bit of a difficult situation. It, I'm, these are not inexpensive enough that a person on my salary and expenses is able to keep a bunch of them as backup. If I could have everything the same, but, you know, buy a six-pack of them, I would I would completely encourage that. But I, I know that's probably not... Are free. Go then. Send me free guitars. The biggest annoyance of this guitar, however, is the battery. It requires a 9-volt battery. Makes perfect sense. There's, there's a lot of internal miking going on. Oh, and look at the red. See? <laughs> When I started this, this wasn't on, was it? I, I am losing battery as we speak. And uh, that is that happens a lot. Because as long as it is plugged in, the battery is running. There is no, there's no on-off switch or anything. You just have to rip it out and hope you're not live into the PA at the time. It would be nice to maybe have a, like a... a standby or on and off button to help with battery management but i'm trying to get better at remembering not to leave it plugged in but that it's difficult but it's a little bit worse than that so here's the battery case or what used to be the battery case probably a couple months in it broke uh it's the battery doesn't quite fit. It's it's a little bigger than that. And then trying to lock it down, I broke it off. So I keep it in now with a little bit of 3M masking tape for delicate surfaces. It works pretty well, lasts, lasts for a long time. Another problem, though, is that that isn't the only thing that broke. The connection to... The battery also broke. This is a new one that I soldered on myself. You can see my terrible soldering job. And it's much better. This is The old one had a very flexible end. This has got a hard plastic end. And that works much better. If, if I did have one piece of constructive advice, somebody in uh, Montreal is listening right now. I would suggest finding a better supplier for these things. This is such a beautiful instrument that is made so well. I do not think finding a better, a better battery solution would be all that expensive. Maybe something where you can slide in and lock it in so there's none of the wires or anything. 
I don't know. I, I, I mean, even better, could you use phantom power? I mean, that would be cool if I had, you know, um, an XLR output and it could run on phantom power. I would use that 100% of the time, but I, I don't know if that's possible. I, I'm not sure what the power requirements are. I, I really don't know anything about about guitars. Um, I just play them. So anyhow, it's a great guitar. Go out and get yourself a six-pack of them if you can afford it. If not, do your best. The only way I can imagine it being better is having more of them and having it magically powered instead of with a battery. ¶¶ 